Uh, honestly, I was super nervous, but even days before. Welcome everybody to a new Revealed podcast. My name is Adam Kay, and today I get to sit down with Jeffrey Satorius, Fantastic, and Maddox, and talk about life and music. Welcome to the Revealed podcast. My name is Adam Kay. You may have heard my voice on Revealed Selected, but now we get to do it in the real life. So we have three amazing guests and we're going to ask lots of questions, uh, questions you want answered, hopefully. Um, so let's jump in and find out who is with us today. Uh, boys, um, let's start with you. Uh, you look delicious and um, <laughs> uh, you don't look so tired because we're here at ADE, you know, and tell us who you are and um, your artist name and your real name. Uh, I'm Damien. I'm Destic better known as Destic. Um, I'm signed at Refield Recordings um, now for a year, I think. Um, and I'm a DJ and producer from the Netherlands. And that's it, I think. <laughs> it's strange because we've interviewed each other and we've spoken on Revealed Selected, but this is the first time we get to do yeah, it, it in the real life. Yeah, so it's a pleasure yeah, to meet yeah, you. Pleasure to awesome. meet you. Awesome. Okay, let's go over to this character. He's a rogue. Um, you may have seen him around in some dark places, some nightclubs. <laughs> Introduce yourself to the world, please. Um, my name is Pablo, uh, better known as Maddox. Um, I think all the Revealed fans, they know me um, from, I think I'm signed for over five years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time. Um, and I'm a DJ producer as well from the Netherlands. And um, Revealed is definitely my home. Uh, yeah. It's nice again. We've spoken, <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, spoken yeah. but never in, in real life. So this is a, a, it's a, it's a Revealed first for us. And it's, it's yeah, nice true. to be here. Let's complete the trilogy. Um, introduce yourself, please, to the world. Known to the Revealed family, but uh, just joined recently. Jeffrey Satori is formerly known as Dash Berlin. And uh, very happy to be here. I'm a stone throw away in The Hague, the capital, administrative capital from the Netherlands, The Hague. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I love to be part of the family uh, with, uh, with Revealed. Just out of interest, because we have spoken on Revealed Selected before, did you listen to those episodes, just out of interest? I, personally, I never listen anything back. I never look anything back. Then ever. trust me, the interviews were wicked. <laughs> <laughs> I take your word for it. Please do. Um, so we are here in Amsterdam, uh, at the Revealed headquarters, and if you've seen and watched some of uh, Revealed's content, you may be familiar with the surroundings. But now I want to dig deep, all right? We've got loads of questions. I want to call it what's what, all right? I want to ask loads of questions, and I want you to answer me the in detail about mm. your life and in music. Um, so let's start with ADE. And let's just start with Jeffrey, for example. What, what does ADE mean to you? It's such an important global event. Usually the world is in Amsterdam on your doorstep. So what's it like um, as, a, as a native, if you like? Uh, global gathering, uh, 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 definitely a few steps up from the Miami Music Week where things, you know, kind of originated. ADE stepped that uh, up a few notches. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an influx of the world of our industry and maybe even beyond in Amsterdam for a week. And uh, yeah, it's something uh, for upcoming artists, uh, respected artists, uh, wannabe artists, not to be missed. Uh, personally, I've, I've never been much part of ADE, which is actually very weird because usually I was on tour. Um, but uh, yeah, my, my voice is actually going away. <laughs> and that is one of the things which is kind of new to me with this ADE, you know, speak to, uh, speaking to so many people and uh, people you maybe know from emails or mm -hmm. just from hi by you get to talk to a little bit longer. Or DMs more. these days, right? That's how exactly. much the conversations yeah, 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 happen. Yeah, 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 but yeah. You, get to people know, you get to know people a little bit more like personally. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very nice get together. And I, I, have, I do have to say, I enjoy it very, very much. Although so it's a, a more or less of a new experience, actually, for me. Mm -hmm. Pablo, what about you? What was your first ADE? Do you remember it? Um, yeah, I do remember. I think like the first one, I just went as a guest, go to all the parties. Yeah, yeah. But um, one, one moment I really remember well is me preparing some USB sticks as a wannabe artist. And I remember going to a show of Dairo, and he was playing there, and being in the front row, shouting his name, throwing my USB stick. No way. And uh, one month later, I received an email from him like, yo, dude, this tracks, they are sick, keep sending me stuff. So he caught so, your USB stick, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I gave it to him, right. he was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, wow. but it was great, so that's, that's basically my experience. And then after that, slowly you get in touch with the right people. But that um, was the breaking point, right? Yeah, kind of, kind of. Um, but it's good to, to, to be able to reach like artists that are unreachable yeah. normally. And um, right now, ADE is more like uh, what Jeff said, like getting a face behind the name, behind the email address, you know, mm -hmm. because you're talking to those people, you never see them. 
uh, and now you get to meet them in real life. I don't suppose you remember the club that that was in? No, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. There are so many, and if you've never <laughs> been to Amsterdam, there are so many event um, like pop up locations, but also yeah. actual club event uh, locations. Amazing. I mean, one of my favorites is Jimmy Woo's. I don't know if you've been to that, and it's just a lot of good memories. No, I've never been. Okay, but again, like the, there's the you say one name and it's got its own reputation. So that's what's great about coming to Amsterdam is you can select all of these things, and year by year you kind of tick off maybe the 150 clubs that are actually yeah. here. In They're too many, too yeah. many. <laughs> and Damien, talk to us about your. Um, what does the ADE mean to you? Uh, it does mean a lot. I think I went to AD for the first time when I was like 16 years old, yeah. uh, because you still could go to the club here in the Netherlands <laughs> when you were 16. <laughs> Um, and I went to like small parties from labels like Future House Music uh, because I make Future House Music. Mm -hmm. That's the way how I started. Uh, and nowadays it's just meeting people behind the emails and stuff, just what the guy said. Yeah. Um, but in the beginning it was more like going to parties and, and drop your USB everywhere to like bigger artists and stuff. So yeah, th it really changed in, in, in the last few years. So if Dairo um, was uh, Pablo's first, who was your person that you were trying to get your first USB stick to? Um, I think I tried to give my USB sticks to uh, Martin Garrix. Yeah. Uh, Don Diablo, I tried it. Right. And I went to all the demo drops. So, um, yeah, just all the big labels. Now, explain for us, because um, some people may not be familiar with what that is, but um, Amsterdam Dance Event allows you to connect in a different way. So you've mentioned demo drops. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting nods around the room that everyone sort of knows what they are, but just explain what that is and, and what that allows people to do that maybe you don't usually get to do. Yeah, you can just, like the, the big labels have uh, meetings or just kind of, uh, um, how do you say, uh, things scheduled events, yeah. and you can go there and meet like the artists who signed at the label. And then you can like just show your demo or uh, talk with them, have a quick talk, uh, ask them ask them things about their uh, career and stuff. So it's really easy to connect with bigger artists because mm -hmm. um, nowadays it's you can uh, you can send everyone a DM, but you don't get a response every time. So during ADE, that's that's a lot easier to. It's like a real Can life forum. Like, I don't yeah. know if any of you, yeah. did, did you use the forums? Because laid back Luke's got famous one, you know, the yeah. people he's brought through, like Afrojack, for example, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And then you kind of look at people like Chris Lake, who used, um, I think it was a label called Huge, you know. And um, the, even everybody who is in a position now yeah. has been on the same path that you are all, all in there right now. Yeah. Jeffrey, hit me with where um, the, the path that you took because you, you're, respectively, you're a little bit more established. True, yeah, for me it was a little bit different. So, like I just explained, for me it's very nice to actually be on ADE, as of which former years I wasn't here. Mm -hmm. But funny enough, I was here with ADE when we had a postage uh, stamp in the Netherlands presentation with uh, Hartwell, Armin, Afrojack, um, and that was during ADE. And, um, I can totally feel the vibe, and what I really like of, of ADE as well is that you also bump into people who you normally meet while touring. And those people are always very welcoming, you know, they're, so, uh, they're always happy to see you because you're in their country yeah, yeah. and they're excited and, you know, you're going to do a show. And now it's the other way around. And then I, I actually feel the need to, uh, yeah, to, 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 welcome them a little represent bit represent your country almost yes yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. so i you know i want to you know buy them a drink or maybe we can have a bite to eat or somewhere you know i want to be hospitable as well mm -hmm. and uh that creates you know a very very nice understanding between people you know if you're hospitable towards each other yeah. you create a bond and and that's also what uh, ade kind of means to me it's it's fascinating just because there's so many questions i've got them all there but actually the things that you're saying there's there's more things to pick up on there's been an interesting, let's just get the elephant out of the room. Obviously, the industry's been different for the last 18 months, two years. So let's talk about how you've dealt with it, because those relationships you talk about going to people's countries obviously haven't been happening. So, um, Pablo, talk to us about how mm -hmm. you have... Um, you've managed the last two years, you know, what, what have you, oh, we all can hear obviously what you have been up to, but you <laughs> yeah. know, on, on a personal level, uh -huh. um, take us back to the beginning and, and sort of take us through a small journey on like how you've got to there to here. Sure. So first, uh, I think my last show was in 2019 oh, wow. at the Revealed Boats House party <laughs> um, because I've been really busy. And after that, I decided to take like a month break. Right. Then I was supposed to go to China and it got cancelled a week before, like five days before, because mm -hmm. of some virus going around. We didn't even know like what was really happening. Um, 
And then Ultra Miami got cancelled mm. a week before and yeah, everybody knows the rest. So actually, um, personally, what I do like about this is that there's way more free time. And um, especially with some friends, I've got way more quality time, you know, um, because you've been so busy. So friends and family, they could be first mm -hmm. this, these times around. They're going to have to get used to it the other way around soon. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm already preparing them like, okay. You know, I'm not going to be yeah. here next year. You know? It's going to change again. Yeah, yeah. But then again, so, it's nice to have that balance. Like the fact you've sampled it at least, right? Yeah, so that's the good part of it. But uh, obviously you miss the shows. You're, you're making music with, without any reference. Yeah, and yeah. especially for me, like right at the moment the pandemic started, I wanted to premiere a new sound um, that everybody knows right now, I yeah. guess. Uh, as it's been almost two years, but we decided to just keep on releasing it. But actually, all the tracks I've made without any reference, how the crowd will respond. Yeah. You've got to trust yourself with those kicks, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> they're going to land yeah. and they're going to... Yeah. So far, Officially, so you try to imagine and sometimes like I play a, a live set somewhere and get inspired, you know, but that's a huge change. And um, normally you can try a track, you change a few things, you go on tour again, you try it again. Mm -hmm. You change a few things, nothing like that. Right. It's, so it's weird. I yeah. want to talk. I'm, I'm going to put a pin in inspiration because we're going to come back to that in yeah, a moment. Yeah, sure. Um, Damien, talk to him about the last two years for you. Like, how did it? How did you deal with this? How did you deal with the the, the psychological thing at the start of like, what am I going to do? Yeah, for me it was re really different because it for me it was like the first year I went touring um, a bit more. I had a, a lot of shows uh, scheduled, and it was for me the first time, the first year that I had a lot of shows scheduled. But they all got cancelled, um, so that was, that was really shitty. Um, but then afterwards I thought like, yo, I just go in the studio and make a lot of music and stay inspired and, and do stuff with friends and also make kind of other music. Uh, I tried to uh, produce some more pop stuff. Uh, also Dutch songs, nice. uh, so I really tried to inspire myself in the studio and do different things. So, but it was really difficult because it, for me it was like the first year to have more shows, and they all got cancelled. So, so yeah, that that was really shitty. And that was a, almost like a peak point. So, yeah. how did you how did you cope with that? Because it, it, to almost have it and then to, to have it taken mm -hmm. away, how did that make you feel? I didn't I didn't realize uh, because it, the the whole situation, uh, the whole COVID situation was. Yeah, like some nightmare. Yeah, it, it doesn't look real, uh, and I can't look back on it now and think, yo, what happened? I, I'm, I'm, I'm still not. I don't know what happened. But no, no one knew I, yeah, how long it would take. This was the that's yeah. like yeah. I was like, oh, maybe one month. Oh no, it's gonna be two months. Yeah. Oh no, it's gonna be mm. three months. Oh, next summer we're gonna yeah. be back, and it just keeps on going. But I think if if I had known it was two years. Fucking hell. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been way worse. But, and so what, you're saying you wouldn't have been able to handle that kind of... Maybe, yeah, you, yeah. But then each day is a new battle, right? And you win the day yeah. and then you win the battle, But right? I remember being stressed, like, okay, like, no shows. How am I going to cope? How am I going to do it? And if I had known it was two years, like, I don't know if I would have handled it. Yeah. But then yeah. that, that's... But, but it's just day by day living and you start doing different things. Uh, yeah. And that's the lesson, I, like, if anyone watching, that's what I want to sort of jump in on, is that yeah. we tend to look at things and human nature is like one big thing, you know, like a marathon. In, uh -huh. But if you break down a marathon, it's only a, like a series of small runs, right? But so that's, that's the way we've got to get over these things because that was the scary thing, wasn't it? It's like, actually, we'll, it'll be okay because we'll get the festivals in the summer and then it was like, no, actually, they're cancelled. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, yeah. we've got ADE and that, that got cancelled. Like, exactly. <laughs> what about New Year's Eve? Um, yeah. <laughs> what about the Australian tour? You know, and then, yeah. So, Jeffrey, what about you? How did, you know, looking back, um, what was the thing that pulled you through to where we are today? Like, you know, if we're talking about the, the, the fear factor of two years, how did you manage it? For me, it was a little bit different than the other guys because I kind of put myself in the middle. I didn't push myself like, oh, this is going to be maybe really short or really long term. I just kept myself a little bit in denial, saying like, if it's going to take long, I'm going to find something that's going to keep me occupied for a longer time. And if it's in the short time, then I'm you know, going to continue what I do, what I just stopped, mm -hmm. touring. Um, what pulled me through eventually for the long run uh, were live streams. Or I was doing uh, daily live streams from, uh, I would say, mid-March, end-March, every day, 8 o'clock sharp. 
<laughs> and um, sometimes with uh, with uh, which is with CDJ, sometimes with vinyls, uh, sometimes short sets, sometimes deep sets, sometimes longer sets. Uh, I did one or two shows like seven, eight hours straight, and then you know uh, the whole interaction. That is something I really needed to get used to because you know you're staring at the screen and you see p the people popping up and people jumping off and people reacting and it's so. Static. It's mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I eventually that really got to me at the end where I was like, okay, I have almost 250 episodes done now. I'm gonna <laughs> quit at 250 because I'm done. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it was getting saturated. I done like uh, uh, um, uh, live so live streams as a as a as a um, as a fundraiser. I did for UNICEF and. Uh, I, Together with the normal daily live streams, and I was like, "Okay, I'm I'm done now." It served that, its purpose. At right, that yeah. point, at that point, at the end of 2020, uh, because I'm married to a Chinese wife, we got the ability to actually travel to China. That is so weird. Still, when I think of it, but we found a way to actually get into China. And w when I got to China, I got to continue touring. So let's just mo let's, I'm going to come back to you boys, but just for the moment of traveling, that first travel moment. Um, what did that feel like? Like a blessing because our baby was sleeping the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a joy. I mean, you got to watch the movie, yeah? It was more about the first show. The first right. show, again, that was highly, highly emotional. Mm -hmm. It was almost like surrealistic. The, again, and when was it? Yeah, if I may ask. No, no. There was uh, beginning of uh, January, the first, first week of January 2020. Crazy. There's so much uh, to sorry, unpack 20, here. Uh, yeah, 2020. Uh, uh, tw uh, uh, let me say it. it's COVID. That's what happens. Yes, exactly. Date. 2021, January 2021. 2021. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 You've first week. You, but you've just dropped so much stuff there, and um, so I want to come back to gigs and that first feeling. But I want to also just go back to the, the 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 routine. You just mentioned about doing something daily at the same yeah. time. All right. So I'm coming to you, boys. Um, I'm a massive uh, advocate of, of daily routines and habits because I think they they just help you do your thing. So let's go to you, Pablo. What is, uh, what's your daily habit? What's your routine? What got you through to where we are today? Um, I don't really, I don't even put an alarm in the morning. I just wake up naturally. Okay. <laughs> so Two o'clock? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wake up like eight or nine. Uh, between that, de depends on the night before. Um, what I do weekly is like go to the gym mm -hmm. three times a week. And that's something I've been able to do now due to COVID. Legs or arms? Um, cool. Cardio, full, cool. bo full body, <laughs> right, full yeah. body, squats, deadlifts, <laughs> high intensity until training. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and then I just go inside the studio and I decide if if I have inspiration, I go and do that. But there's no really routines. Interesting. Other than that. Th yeah, th that's the, that's the why I'm asking. But it, but it's maybe I should I should look into it because I do feel it c could help sometimes, but. Let's see what yeah. Damien's going to yeah, say. Yeah, what about yeah, your I'm routine? Curious. What is it? I think I do the same as you. I, I go to the gym like mostly every day and then I go to the studio. But what I did the last one and a half years, I scheduled a lot of sessions with musicians. Mm -hmm. So you have a session like almost every day and you're working together with other people. So it, it doesn't get boring in the studio. Yeah, their interaction is, is something that really helps me to just talk with people and, and share stories and write music. I have a question for the guys. What did you guys do when uh, all the all the all the gyms were uh, were closed? I um, went gymming outside. I bought these uh, bands, you know, yeah, yeah, in different strengths. Elastic bands. Yeah, and uh, right outside of my apartment, there's like uh, some kind of gym area outside with pull-up bars, etc. So I just started doing that and doing uh, running. Those resistance bands yeah. are amazing because they mm -hmm. pack up, you take them anywhere and like you yeah. can do your arms. Actually, your they, work, they work kind of great. I yeah. was actually in doubt, like, should I go back to the gym? Yeah. But I wanted to do like the deadlifts and squats yeah. properly. Mm -hmm. So I went back. So when, when your routine fell away, you, you found a new one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I, I personally, I think it's important to give you that structure, even if it's the one mm -hmm. thing, you know, like getting an, an appointment in. And I know for me, I didn't realize it was happening because, but until it, was, it became apparent. I'm like, I'm not speaking to people. I'm not having those conversations. Mm. I need to create those those moments where, and that's why I said about routine. Yeah. I'm going to speak to someone today. Who's it going to be? So I was planning just one call with someone, just to yeah, yeah, just yeah. to interact because it was yeah. you forget like it's all right going in the studio and just locking away. And you know what happens in the studio? Like you go in at eight o'clock in the morning and it's eight <laughs> o'clock the next day. Like oh sorry, I missed the day. Yeah. You know. But so it's important as a producer, as a DJ, to like factor those yeah, date yeah. those 
I'm going to walk yeah. away from my screen for two minutes. Is, is that mm -hmm. something that you do in the studio? Do you, do you set screen times or do you take your phone off? Or uh, I, I'm a nine to five guy. Right. Okay. This is good. So Routine. <laughs> is that because of the family or is five. that because it's, you just prefer that? Ten I prefer I, yeah. half day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, at, at least that's just a form of a routine. You know, sometimes you make a few more hours and sometimes a few more less, but that's basically a little bit yeah. of my routine, like nine to five, 10 to five. What about you boys? Like are you night owls or are you, you know, what, what are you? Yeah, it depends. Sometimes I'm in the studio for the whole night and sometimes I'm just uh, for a day mm -hmm. or for three or four hours uh, or I have a session and I've been there from 10 o'clock till 12 in the evening or something. It depends. So when, I'm, when I'm inspired, I'm in studio and when I'm not, I'm not. Creativity is not yeah. nine to five, all right? No. So if yeah. you're a creative, you've yeah. got to go what you do. So what's your, yeah. what's yours, Pablo? Well, what's during, your? the, during the evening, like, or then my creative creativity starts but i try to work in the morning as well but sometimes it's just like emails i don't know i've built a website mm -hmm. i've built my visuals and that's like things i can do in the morning Sample and then packs. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then in the evening like sometimes creativity sparks yeah um, so you gotta go when you gotta go right yeah. yeah but i wanted to say something about like a routine it's not really a routine but speaking to someone during those moments i i remember like i have a few friends also in music or working from home and we all play Call of Duty still sometimes. <laughs> so literally every, yeah, like during the day for like 20 minutes or yeah. 30 minutes, we, we would just boot up Call of Duty and do like three or four gunfights. And that's it. And then go back to work. So you know there's but like... It's cool because you're talking to each without other. Without a well. doubt. Yeah. And you see it sometimes across the socials, you know, you see like... Um, I saw Oliver Heldon play, um, Nicky Romero play Afrojack all on the same time. Yeah. So do you, are you into this kind of like fellow DJ versus DJ or are you just talking about your social mates or? Just with a good friend and right. uh, just we, we team up and we put on Discord and we can chat to each other. Sweet. And it's good to be outside of the studio for like 20 minutes. Just to relax. Yeah. Just to yeah. like, I'm not thinking about work. I'm exactly. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. So this is, uh, and now we come back to the, the question that Jeffrey wrote about um, that first that first time you got to play after a long time. Now I'm not saying it was the first gig, but you know what? You you, you, you know your decks have been down. You've not used put USB in. Think about that that the first time you've done that, and I don't know when that is, and that's what I want to ask you about. And that feeling, what did it feel like, Jeffrey? You you sort of posed that or answered the, uh, started that question. So let me come to you first. Um, when you were in China and you played that gig, what was the what did your heart feel like? Yeah, like like one of my first shows ever again. Yeah, and uh, not bullshitting. Uh, you know, I'm a very sensitive person in a way, so really, music really, really touches me on mm -hmm. stage. And and over the years, you know, you get used to it a little bit more. You you become a little bit more stale. You know, you mm -hmm. get used to a feeling. But that really, really struck me in the beginning. I was like, oh my god, I really got like a lump in my throat, and er every vocal just hit and. Yeah, it was a blessing and it was almost torturing at the same time because it was just, yeah, it was like like a wake-up call or something. I don't know. Just like my, my feeling for music got a little bit in a slumber and then boom, it got woken up again. Uh, what I like about that is that um, very few people get to experience the first time twice. But yeah. I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing from what you said that... so. Was it as good as you hoped it would be? You know, like because I, I don't know how long ago the first time was, but I, I don't go into any show with with a certain certain perspective or or a hope or, you know, I just go right, and then I will see what happens. And afterwards, I'm happy or I'm less happy. Then what about your first show? After you know, I'm just talking about the first event after a long time, after the longest amount of break. So do you remember it and what was it? Um, yeah, I think it was after COVID. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did a small show in Germany. Uh, it were only a hundred people, um, so the first big show for me will be ADE. Right. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it, and if I hear all the stories, <laughs> I'm really curious. So, um, but the the first show in Germany was really cool. Only a hundred people, but the the energy is so sick to to feel that again on stage and play new music you you've made a year ago or one and a half year ago. It's such unreal. So I would say that. Um, Nerves are the same as excitement. Like, you know, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're nervous, it's the same feeling. You know, you a weird stomach. So are you, are you nervous and excited? Or, are you, you know, what's, what, how are you feeling before um, we play? Because this, let's be honest, this is being recorded before yeah, yeah. Uh, our event. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah. That's yeah. good to feel. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It keeps you on yeah. your edge, right? Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. are these going to work? Do yeah. I remember how to use the equipment and yeah. all that kind of yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Pablo, what about you? Like, because 
you know, you've spoken about the, the isolation. Mm -hmm. um, what about the elation of playing to, to people? How you, you know? uh, honestly, I was super nervous, but even days before, while well, preparing the set, I was thinking about it. I was thinking like, okay, how should I use the mic? Um, especially because I'm not playing any of the old songs. So right. it's a completely new set, completely new edits. So I've been preparing a long, long time. And then the first show was in Denmark um, for a reveal party at a festival. And um, actually, when I was there, I was less nervous mm -hmm. because I had prepared well, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm always a little bit nervous. I think it's healthy because you're showing yourself, you're showing your music, your passion to, to the people. Um, but this time was, yeah, man, a magical moment. The moment I pressed play and, and I heard the crowd's reaction to the first drop, it's like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be we're, so we're back, yeah. Nice. It definitely feels like the first time at a festival. When I went yeah. to the dance floor and I felt, I felt the first bass here, uh -huh. I just, I grabbed my mate, I was like, yeah! <laughs> it, was, it was just like, oh, I miss this so much. You know, yeah. it really did like, it reminded you of, running me of the reason we do what we do, you know, like exactly. just to be part of that, that yeah. culture. I was like so, yeah. so happy. So this is really nice to be able to sort of share these emotions with you. And I'm like excited for you as well, because obviously that motion's yeah. going to kick in. You're going to be in tears. <laughs> <Can't wait. laughs> um, let's talk about what's, um, have you changed anything? Like if you, if you look back two years ago and you look back now, what, what's different about you? Like, does that make sense? Like, what do you do differently now that you, you used to do, you go, I don't do that anymore. That's not me. I know you've got a whole musical change, yeah. but I'm talking about, you know, personal habits. I'm talking about DJing, the way you mix. So, you know, what have you learned over these last sort of two years that's changed you in a positive way? Does that make sense? Is there, is there any yeah, adjustments? Yeah, but it's a, it's a diff difficult question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 of course, yeah. of course. I, I actually, yeah. really, I, I want to tap into that for a second because I, we're three totally different types of persons mm, yeah. and and uh, so I, I expect we all have a completely different answer to the question. I hope question. so. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I qu I'm want, quite curious. Do you want me to give you an example? Yeah. Um, so for me, I now know I need less, if that makes sense. Whereas before I consumed a lot um, and I spent a lot of time just having a bit of everything. What I've now done is just sift the gold. So I only focus on what mm. I know I like, t you know, to a degree, you know, so I don't just buy five things. I only buy one thing, if that makes sense. So does that, does that make it easier to answer? Yeah, maybe a bit. Maybe it's a food habit. Yeah. Maybe it's a, a, a listening habit. Um, you know, have you changed like your workstations or, you know, I don't even know, but I'm just want to dig a little bit deeper, like lift up the bun and go like, you know, you as a person, what's, what, what has COVID done to you? What's it changed? I think I, I, I really uh, understand now that I need people around me to, to talk with, uh, to, to hang out with, but also to work with in the studio. And um, I think I really mentioned that I couldn't stay just on my own in the studio and, and, and be alone. I think I need a lot of people around me to be happy. That's to what talk I'm talking to learn. The, you yeah. know, that, that, that realize that that moment you go, this is what I'm about. Yeah. This is, these are the things that make me mm -hmm. do the best things that I do. I need them in my life. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Great. So have you built up a network of people now that you trust? That yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, some of my, my old best friends, I, I texted them and I was like, yo, we, we need to hang out again. Okay. And um, also people from the industry in the industry, uh, people from Refield. Uh, yeah, I, I was just more into talking with people and, and, and hanging out or uh, just have a small conversation on, on WhatsApp or something, uh -huh. I don't know. That really helped me through through this this okay. COVID situation. Pablo, what about you? Any, any um, actually, like what Damien is saying is kind of true for me as well. Um, like I used to be the guy that if, if they asked me like, hey, do you want to come tonight? I'm like, no, I have to work because it's like work, 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 right. work or you're on tour. And I never said like, yeah, I can come. And I think um, my mind has changed a little bit that sometimes it's good to just say yes and take time for it and just go or invite people over and uh, take the time. And then in the end, if it's not possible, then okay, but try to manage more uh, free time for your friends, family, whatever. It's so important. And I, I'm, <clears throat> my, I worry that we'll forget this, you know, when the whirlwind starts yeah, yeah. again. And that's why, I'm, that's why I'm kind of focusing on this question. I think I'm, it's so important. I'm yeah. still not even that good at it. I'm still <laughs> learning, I guess. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of scared that I will go back uh, 
still hold put it previously. write it down somewhere yeah, yeah, like, yeah i should i should <laughs> but you know like yeah this is like a to-do list i must speak yeah. to my friends and all those kind but of also like i want to i, I realize that i want to take friends with me on tour sometimes we're gonna, because often i go Shit. alone yeah um and especially if there's shows in europe now i want to take the time to just bring people every time so they can experience it as yeah. well like what what it's like because it's, it's hard to describe sometimes what it was like, but if they see it, then you can share people, that People will never understand yeah. unless you've done it mm. like a proper tour, and then they're like, okay, now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, what about you? So now you've heard the other, uh, the, the other answers, is there anything that actually kind of resonates with you and go, you know what, yeah, I was this, but now I'm this? Or Yeah, well, like I said, I think all the, the answers are different, and for, uh, different, and for me as well. Um, I, I got bombarded into like a, a fresh new family with a baby and uh, in the COVID time, so you're like extra protective. But mm. at the same time, I, you want to stay uh, visual. You want to curate to fans, to enthusiasts, to labels, to new music. Yeah. So you have to find your way uh, in, 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 that, um, in, in, in that in that like tornado, you know? And at first I catapulted myself into a work mode like working 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 and at, actually while doing that i realized that no that's 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 not the way and it's it's you know family is my is my uh, my 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 and rock your energy my yeah. my energy and and that's what me that's what supports me like from from the beginning to the end and that will always be there. So that's what I learned. And the funny thing is actually driving up here, I was listening to uh, Eye of the Tiger. And it has a, <laughs> has a sentence in it, like, uh, change your passion for glory. And eventually, and there's a little bit of an advice for you guys here, is that when you, you know, build your career, eventually change your passion for glory. When you have your glory, what's next? That's the real things in life that count. Mm -hmm. Family friends and that's what you some people they got like struck by lightning because of covid because oh i actually always neglect my friends or or you know people who are actually really dearly care about mm -hmm. and um yeah in a way it it it, uh, it it learned me a lot for um yeah always respect the people who are most close to you so now we've gathered the um the the where we are now and how we think I want to fast forward to the future. I want to see, I don't want you to think deeply about this. Um, you have been sat on your hands. You've been in front of your uh, studios making music. But what is the, or, the most audacious goal that you are yet to achieve? And I want you to think about like what your intentions are. Um, you as an artist, you as a human, whatever it is, like the most audacious goal that you are still yet to achieve and that you intend to, to get to. Now, I c it can be five years, it can be 10 years, it can be up to you, like life goals. But like, where's your mindset at now? And, and it's a big question, so take a moment. But <laughs> I'm talking dream big, you know, like, you know, reach for the stars, land on the moon type stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. I, I can kick it off to, 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 to give you guys some time to think about it. <laughs> it's like, this is a long form podcast, so these are long form questions. I can talk really <laughs> slow. Uh, for, for me personally, it's returning to the main stages right. and secondly, uh, coming out with a brand new artist album of my own, on my own, and just showcasing that to the world, what I have, uh, you know, uh, under the hood in a way, uh, which, uh, which can be surprising, I hope, in a good sense in the, in, in the future sometime. This sounds like it's, um, you're, it's already... Is, I mean, what's the time frame? Progress. What's the time frame it's, it's, on this? It's thing? in progress. Okay, then. So, with the intention of like, are we talking like two years, three years, four years? No, one I year? Say, I would say a year. Okay. Yeah. That that main stages. You can say this time next year, all being well. Main stages are open, and we're all part of that. Um, is the album um, to come inside with that, or is it just, is, is it still like you said a work in progress? Are we talking two tracks? Are we talking five tracks? Are we talking collaborations? No, a, a proper artist album. So okay, that's that's not an EP. It's not an extended <laughs> yeah. EP. Okay. it's a proper artist album. So to to my likes, that is like fifteen plus tracks. Wow, okay. for sure. So it's a proper um, deep work from yes. inside your soul. And yes, yes, it takes as long as it takes. It's it's biographic at some time, so it, it it really comes from far. 
Okay, this is yeah. good. So yeah. there's the audacious goal. Um, have you got a title for that? Or how do you work? Do you fit your title I, and then yes, work the tracks? I do. Out? I do, okay. actually. You don't need to share it? I'm not going to. Good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know you were going to say that. So I <laughs> but it, I, I, it's, again, like we could talk about track titles. Do you come up with a track title first and then work to the track title? Or do you just make the track and then go, this is more? It, it kind of came together also with COVID. It's, it's, a, it's a storytelling of what happened. Uh, prior to COVID, into COVID, and now also going out of COVID. Right. That that is my storytelling with everything, which is going to be featured on my album. Good work. So we we'll we have to be patient for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you have to. No, <laughs> uh, Pablo, I'm coming to you for the same. So that the audacious goal, and it could be this, it could be something uh -huh. else. You know, don't feel like you've got to follow a path. No, I know. Cool, cool. I know, but I have something in mind because I'm, I'm going to keep falling back to this. But we've got the new sound, and I hope. Like my goal would be to like conquer the world with it, so to say, play the all the big festivals, main stages because I've never done that. Right. Um, like Tomorrowland Ultra Music Festival and then main stage, main stage. You know, that's really a goal. And um, yeah, just play my music everywhere and be really, really at the top of it. Um, and and maybe one more thing. <laughs> 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 um, I would like to play, I'm already almost doing it, um, but a, a set with only my own tracks. And right now I can feel like a set with like 80, 90%, but that would be a goal to, to give a true Maddox experience, only my own tracks. Um, so how far is that away, do you think, in time? Um, if we include edits, it could be, I think one year maybe, and then it will be fine. Yeah. What, how do you deem success? Because is, is it sort of Spotify sales? Is, oh, sorry, uh, streams, is it sales? Is it, um, is it other people copying your music? Like what, what does... I think it's all, all of those together. Like Spotify is really important, but it's not the only thing. And it's just streams. Like there are really big DJs that do not get streamed that much, but they play all the big festivals and the other way around as well. And it's the combination of things. Like for me, uh, streams are doing great right now and I need to get out and on the main stages. That's my, my goal first, I think. Uh, especially with the club music, yeah. Again, these are like, these are 12 month to 24 month timelines, aren't they? I think for both of you so far, right? Realistically? <laughs> Let's hope so. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm backing you on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Damien, what about your timeline, your audacious goal? How far in yeah. the future is it and what is it? Um, yeah, for me, as I said, uh, last year would have been my kind of breakthrough um, uh, show wise. Uh, I would have done more shows than I ever did. Uh, but it all got cancelled. So I'm really looking forward to do all these shows and playing all the stages um, in Asia and, and in Europe. And um, I'm just really looking forward to play all the stages and see all the fans and, and just play out live my music. So that's a really big goal for me in, in the, I think, the next 12 months, maybe. But I also want to really work on songwriting and uh, producing other music than only uh, dance. Um, uh, writing pop music, uh, work with Dutch artists. Um, yeah, so it, it, it yeah it depends. Show-wise, I want to do a lot uh, more um, than the last few years, but I also want to just just uh, work on myself as a musician. I'm going to put a, a bigger goal in there. A bigger goal, to, to, okay. But when I'm saying audacious, <laughs> right? So if okay, you're talking about yeah. working with artists mm -hmm. in the pop world, yeah. I'm saying have a billboard number one. Yeah. That will be great. That's an audacious goal, right? That's really, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, want, I want you to kind of put that up there and, and not um, that you have to work to it, but it's like, hey, look, you know what, one day, because you know, who knows what the future holds? Yeah, but f as a DJ, it's playing the main stages, right, Ultra, okay. uh, uh, Tomorrowland, uh, that kind of stages. But as, as a musician or a writer and producer, I want to work with, with the bigger pop artists like yeah, Justin Bieber, maybe. Yeah. Ariana Grande. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Now I like I like where this is going. So, um, let's talk about Skrillex and let's talk about mm -hmm. uh, Justin Bieber. Yeah. Um, w why? Um, why them? What What do you like about their sound, their production techniques? What is it? Um, it's so different from dance music, and I really like the techniques they are using and the whole st song structure, and also writing about things that happened in life and. Uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, it, it's really something I like to do. Uh, I started it, I think, one and a half year ago when COVID started. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started writing and doing more the, the the pop kind of things, and I signed at a new publisher who gave me the chance to have cool sessions with with other musicians. Cool. Um, but uh, as example, Justin Bieber, I, I yeah, I'm just a fan of him same, same. from the beginning, and uh, his voice is amazing, and also all the writers he works with are amazing, and yeah, I really want to work with them. Yeah. It's just something I, I dream of when I was young. Let me ask, that, I mean, is there anybody that you guys look, at, you know, if you just say New Music Friday and something comes up, is there anybody that you've heard and said, oh, you know what, this is good? No? Any artists? or I mean, you, could, mean, you mean dance related? Or? Well, yeah, like it could be pop, it could be just somebody that you go, no, oh, I wasn't expecting to like that, but I did. Anyone sort of springs to mind? Like, who do you listen to? Do you, I'm guessing, for example, the gym. Like, we've spoke about going to the gym. Do you listen to your own mixes or is there something else that you listen to? Is I it? go with a friend, so I'm not listening to okay. music now <laughs> in the gym. Interesting yeah, again. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm, I used to love to run to podcasts, you know, oh, yeah. spoken word. But oh, I found really? I, I got faster when I listened to more music. So I stopped <laughs> listening to spoken word podcast. Try it at home. Maybe it works for you. I don't know. <laughs> I, I love listening to John Hopkins and Andrew Weatherall. Right, yeah. Uh, that really, really, yeah. That that hits in a good, good, good way. And um, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm really open minded when it comes to electronic music. And nowadays, uh, yeah, like like you just mentioned, uh, production techniques are changing. It's something you can you can kind of sense, and that that makes it so interesting to follow. Uh, so many known but also unknown artists. Mm-hmm. So actually, uh, yeah, your question is a really good one because it's really uh, interesting time now to you know keep your gu- n- not your guard up, but I mean your your feelers out to see like, hey, what is everybody doing? You know, yeah. is is somebody making a new sound or something? Or <laughs> 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 that is, that, but that's really cool because that is really of now, and a lot of people from the production industry or producers or singer songwriters they also. Uh, yeah, not planned, but unplanned, had the time to actually invest in that. Yeah. Mm. And I have a feeling that that also is coming out bit by bit by bit by bit more. And that makes it also for our industry so much more interesting mm-hmm. for a wider crowd to tap into that. Like, hey, what is going on there? And when people listen and enjoying those shows, like, wow, I'm really overwhelmed what is going on. Because sometimes it sounds so simple, but it's actually not. Did you find these, uh, well, I'm, I'm only talking from personal experience. I found myself listening to more melodic music like uh, Lane 8 or Caribou or, um, Ooh, that's great. you know, like uh, even, um, you know, uh, goodness me, I can't even think like now, like Afterlife, you know, all of their, their labels and Ben Boma. You know, these are just, uh, you know, there, it, there was more melodic, slower, more. Did that, did you find yourself doing that or did you sort of go straight to the heavy beats or, or, or like the hard kicks or, you know, did, did your musical, I know that we're talking about a musical style, but you can't listen to that 100%, 100, like 24 hours a day. So, oh. so what were you listening to when you weren't listening to yourselves? I'm, a, I'm really like, I used to listen to different stuff back in the days, but now really a lot of dance music. So it's all dance it related. All dance. Okay, that's interesting. But um, there's a many different genres. And for example, I do have a list with really old trance tracks that right. I just, and that's kind of my melodic stuff maybe. That's your go-to stuff. No, that's but nice. That's I, I, nice. I get inspired by it as well. Um, and it's really, really old stuff. Um, but also I listen to techno and more like minimum techno to, to just chill down. That kind of it's stuff. Good. And are you just pop or are there any other sort of... No, thing? yeah, a lot of pop music, but also I discovered, I think a few months ago, uh, techno. Mm-hmm. It, I really like it in the gym. It, yeah. it gets me pumped and yeah, th- it's... it's Games. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really good for the games. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. What about like um, your your network of friends? Have they influenced you to, you know, have they sort of brought new things to you that you weren't expecting because you're spending more time with them? You know, like with the conversation. So what, what have you learned from your friends in this kind of time as well? Anything? Your fr- no, come on, support your friends. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> yeah, we've yeah, learned I, loads I, of things with my friends. At first I thought you said fans. No, sorry, I, friends. Actu- for me, actually, I really got connected more to, to the fans and knew them personally even more than I did in sometimes and really become That's like friends and they they come out with like certain personal questions and you you get really into like discussions about stuff some people they yeah. they just started to buy equipment they say what do I need or can you help me out or, or what if I buy that or buy that or how do I start and and you help them out a little bit like that, 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 that is that was so cool that was just like a mini like community like building 
And, and yeah, I don't know for you guys, but in, in some case of actual friends, sometimes uh, yeah, I, I felt a little bit weird that you, yeah, you got so close in contact again. It's yeah. like you felt almost guilty. Like, why didn't it, this mm-hmm. happen before? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you just mentioned then about talking to your fans. Where were you doing that? And I know you said about doing live, live streams. streams. It was, so whilst you were doing the mixing, you were still having those conversations? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, multitasking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You've yes. got my undivided attention. Yeah. And, but that makes it so weird because you're on a camera, you're playing your music, you're selecting your music live at spot, at least that's what I did, mm-hmm. and you're interacting with fans. So usually always something sucks within that trilogy mm. and it's usually it's the camera but because you cannot be interactive to something which is not there yeah. you know so that made it eventually kind of awkward to you know continue with live streams for me personally how do we how do we continue this then if, if we're like if we're in the same place doing our community thing how do we continue even though we're touring how have you factored this in have you spoken to your people about how that moves forward Damien, what about you? No? Um, yeah, but I personally try to uh, uh, have a reply to everyone on Instagram, also the requests I get. Um, I think yeah, I, I like to talk to, to all the fans and people, and I sometimes I take just a, an hour to answer all my DMs. Uh, so um, it, for me, it's not difficult to do that. What about TikTok? Like you, that sounds like oh you're no. all very inst- <laughs> Instagram. No, here. I'm not into TikTok. Okay. Think, no, it's so difficult. I, I don't know what to post. Well, uh, dancing, obviously. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Trying to, yeah. But no. I, I, I the same, I'm a terrible dancer, so you yeah. weren't seeing me dancing. Same but it's, it's an interesting yeah. d- discussion, and uh, Pablo, talk to us, because it sounds like you've got something to say on that. Um, no, it's just, I think the question you ask about friends, mm-hmm. like, um, obviously, like, your whole life changes with your friends, I guess, but it's really hard for me to pinpoint what exactly changes you. So I don't really have a proper answer for that thing, mm-hmm. but I think your friends and the ones you select, they heavily influence you. And for example, what I did with my friends uh, during COVID, we, we started playing a lot of board games. Mm-hmm. And it's something I never expect to be doing <laughs> like two times a week. And those can be simple 20 minutes games or even like three hour super nerdy board games. And what, you got to give us some details. Are we talking Scrabble? Are we talking Monopoly? Are we talking Risk? Or, or you know, are we talking... No, 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 way uh, higher. <laughs> oh, I got this. Way brow. weird. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Talk to us. Tell um, us some the Like, like um, Aeon's End is one that's really nerdy, weird stuff, okay. but it's super cool. And actually, I find that a lot of my friends, everyone who's coming over and they start playing, they're like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. Like, I never knew it. Um, I love that. I love yeah, that. Yeah. What's it called again, just for everyone? So Aeon's End. Okay. But we've got multiple, like Terraforming Mars, uh, Dominion, um, <laughs> all these crazy games. I love it. We've lifted yeah. the bun on this one. Uh, yeah. It's, it's fascinating. That's the whole point of having these conversations, isn't it? Just to kind of like, oh, I never expected to be st- st- talking about that, but here we are, you know. <laughs> it's interesting. It's yeah. truly interesting. Um, so let's think about the, I mean, we've, we've been to the past, we've done the future a little bit. What about the now? Like, what are you most excited about? Um, and that can be anything like I don't I mean it could be the first gig it could be the album it could be the releases it could just be sort of doing main stages like what is what's booked in what do you know is going to happen and what is the most exciting thing that is in the calendar guaranteed to happen Damien you you answer that question Uh, doing shows again Uh, some shows that are scheduled I'm really looking forward to so talk to us dates like talk to us like in the next sort of um, months so Um, if we're talking yeah to start off with ADE the the first show um, uh, and then I think in two months I uh, now one and a half month I do two shows in Germany right I'm really looking forward to and I'm releasing music next month on Refield um, so this is November releases. We've yeah. got um, December mm-hmm. Germany. Yeah, yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. And are you are you already looking ahead to next year and the bookings and yeah. things like that and release yeah. schedules? Talk to us about that as well. Um, yeah, we got a lot of music scheduled uh, on Refield. Uh, some more club music also, but also some more uh, radio friendly kind of music, more mm-hmm. for the for the Spotify uh, kind of things. Um, and uh, we have some shows from last year. We have to, we had to reschedule, and I'm doing them next year. Uh, we also got an India tour coming up. Um, I'm going back to Japan. Um, so, so a lot of cool things uh, for next year. Super exciting. Yeah. I love mm-hmm. that. Okay, cool. Okay, let's talk to Pablo. Tell us what's... Um, um, first of all, next week there's a new release, but I guess when this airs, I don't know it's what the time frame, yeah, yeah. time frame will be. Um, I'm working on uh, three collabs with really big artists that 
will be a secret for now, but I'm super excited for that. They will probably be released next year, all of them. Um, are they revealed? Uh, or are they with the other artists' labels? Or, or? You will find out. Uh, I tried, I tried. <laughs> um, and um, obviously the shows, like uh, next month I'm going to go to Czech Republic, do two shows. Um, we've got the ADE one coming up and I can see the calendar now and they're working on a lot of stuff. Um, I have to say like everything is still a little bit uncertain, so announcements will be a bit later and but it, it's looking good. But finally. you're excited. So super excited. excited. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Finally go back on tour. Jeffrey, what's locked in the diary that you can share with us? What, what is um, it? Locked in the diary is a new tour in Canada and the US. I've done my biggest show ever in Canada in uh, Vancouver, which was sold out two years ago. And I'm really looking forward to it. That one, what is going to happen now? So really when is really that? When, what time? Uh, November, three, three weeks. Three weeks from okay. now. So yeah. November, three, right? Three, 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 four weeks from now, yeah. Excellent. And uh, heading back to uh, Marquee in Vegas, where I have my residency for awesome. like 10 years. And uh, hitting the nightclub again there. I'm really excited for that to see how uh, all the shenanigans are going in Vegas. And uh, yeah, last one is a more of a personal note that uh, my, my, my baby daughter is growing up healthy. That's most important. Amazing. I love that. Um, I know that we've been speaking for a while and, and I know we're sort of a short of time, so let's do some quick fires just because we can. Um, if you could choose any trophy, any trophy, like it could be your favourite sports team, it could be you know, the Ryder Cup, it could be the DJ Magazine Top 100, for example, you're allowed one trophy on your shelf and which one are you choosing? And it can be anything. So um, who want, who's got an idea? Go on. A golden record. I okay. want to hang it in my studio. Nice. Or maybe platinum if we're doing, uh, yeah, yeah. Have you seen those Spotify bowls? I've only know these because um, Diplo's shown it. Really? He had his dog eating out of one. I think it's after a billion streams, you get a Spotify bowl. So wow. there you go. That, 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 there's a thing to aim for. Yeah. <laughs> Audacious goals. <laughs> nice fruit bowl. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think Diplo, to be fair, has got like seven, which is ridiculous. But anyway, it's yeah. Crazy. So there's a thing. Okay, so we're talking about a gold, a gold record frame. Your name all on that. Brilliant yeah. studio. Okay, any other trophies or awards that you want? I think I have the same. I just want, I want a golden record or a platinum <laughs> record. That, that, that's the, the big goal for awesome. now. That's good. Yeah. Um, have you got one? DJ Mag, highest new re-entry ever. <laughs> what a title that is. <laughs> highest new re-entry. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I don't know if that... Can yeah. we, so we fact check that and see M if that's something Maybe we can make one then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's all on you, I'm afraid. <laughs> so good luck with that. Um, let me give you... Um, the question, again, quick fire, because we've done some long forms. Um, describe your sound in one word. Now think carefully, like your, your fans own it, so it's, it almost becomes a hashtag. What is the one word th that describes your sound? Big room techno. Oh, hang on a minute, you can't get that. Big room techno is more than one. So, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> there you go, I'll take that last one. <laughs> It's harder than you think, all right? But, but big room techno is, is the sound, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to accept it based on where you're going with your journey. <laughs> it's, it's too difficult. I've been actually, I've been thinking about a proper name for it. Right. It's, it's so difficult to, to pinpoint it because yeah, it's all in between everything a little bit. It's and medic sound. So that's yeah, it. yeah, but yeah, it's, so. it's, you've got to try and make your story uh, easy for other people to absorb, right? And how do you do that? You've got to give them something that they understand. Yeah, they 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 come they came up with big room techno. Um, so wicked. Yeah, let's just big use room that. Techno. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, Damien, what's that? How, how are we describing you in one word? <laughs> one word. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's just melodic future bound. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have one word for it. <laughs> it's like, he's, okay. he's one up in yeah. Mi mini bio. Um, yeah. <laughs> so hang on, was it melodic? Future bounds. A melodic, I don't, I've never heard it. So, I mean, look for that on yeah. Beatport soon. If, in if we're going that way, yeah. I will go for electro prog pop then. Oh my goodness, me. I can't remember. Nice. All, <laughs> all right, good luck searching those. All right, that's all I'm going to say. Um, let me ask you then, um, nearly the final question. What was the one thing you wanted to talk about that we haven't spoken about. Let's go with Jeffrey for the first on that one. What did you want to talk about that we've not spoken about that you were hoping to say, I only want to talk about we, this? We shouldn't start because I'm a little bit of a talker. Maybe you remember that, but uh, so then we can extend this podcast and we probably shouldn't. <laughs> Episode two. All right. Uh, it, was there anything particular that you wanted to sort of say to the world that you haven't had a chance to say? 
Um, well, you just mentioned Chance, and I'm I'm actually you know reworking with my my new name to new heights uh, in my career, mm -hmm. and I'm very very thankful for all the chances that I get at this point. So everybody who's listening, who's involved directly, indirectly, the fans, I wholeheartedly want to thank the people for giving me that chance. Nice, I like that. Boys, you got, this, I mean, you can say absolutely anything you want to do, whether it's like, go listen to my track, come and see me. It's up to you. But like, what was the one thing we haven't spoken about that you did want to speak about, Damien? Uh, there's not one thing I want to say particularly, no. We but did a good interview, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good but job. But I want to yeah. thank ev everyone for, for like the last one and a half year for streaming the music and, and uh, staying so humble. And yeah, that's one thing I want to say to all the fans. Consider it done. Pablo, it's difficult because you, you've obviously you got to echo what the boys are saying. I'm sure. Probably, yeah. Um, I want to thank, like, uh, maybe talk about revealed and giving me the opportunity yeah. um, to change my sound, and they love it. The fans, they are uh, loving it as well. And um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for that and for uh, giving me the opportunity to be able to do it. Because I know three years ago I wouldn't have been able to do it. Like. If it was earlier than this, I guess, earlier doing mm -hmm. like my own sound because it's difficult to like really create your own own stuff. You try to not follow the rules. I, and, like, um, I like that, yeah. and and we should be said revealed uh, allowing us to do this here and now. And um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm relatively new to the revealed family, and uh, and, and it's it, I already sense the the the, the huge family, and the, I put mm. the emphasis on that word. And I know you've used it a lot today as well with that. There is a family, isn't there? You know, there's a support network, there's um, advice network, there's mentors, um, yeah. there's, you know, there's all of that. And I'm, I'm, there's a term called blowing smoke. <laughs> I, you know, I don't need to blow smoke up revealed because it does itself. Like you see the music, you see the support, you see Gemstone, you see Radar, you see Revealed, you know, you see, and I said just before we started speaking, I didn't realize how big the family was until it was part of it, mm. you know? So if you're watching this, then you obviously know because you're part of the Revealed family. But um, yeah, if you're not here right now, you are part of this family. And I'd just like to say, yeah, thanks for watching and thanks for listening and thanks for sharing and streaming. And, and Revealed Selected will be out next week. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks Thank for your you. openness Thank you. and honesty. You. And it's, uh, I hope we didn't go anywhere that you didn't want to go. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you live. I, I, we get the privilege of doing that. And if not this time, next time and the next time. Okay, good luck with everything that we've spoken about. And let's do this again soon, yeah? Absolutely. Nice one. Thank you. Thanks.